Lights look good. I'm a happy boy. Hell yes. Episode 67 of From Everyone. I'm here with Wesley Robinson. Man, the goal is to try and learn something from everyone, which always like sounds tacky. And then we're just chatting before the show and it's like, oh yeah, there is like a, a real peer-to-peer relationship that I've like, gained here. Of yeah. like, I work so independently so much and chatting with you, it's already like like warms me up of like, oh, okay, there's other people out there doing the same exactly. creative shit, going through the same process. So I appreciate you coming through and taking the time to stop by and hang out with me today. Of course, always. I was super excited when you hit me up about this. Hell I was yes, like, dude. this is sweet. The last time I seen you was at like a, uh, I was working at Moe's and like you like Holy stopped. Holy yeah, fuck, man. dude. I'm a Moe's <laughs> yeah. regular. Shout out to all my Moe's employees out there. Yeah, man. You like pulled up and I was like, yo, and you were like, yo. Oh, I was like, hell yeah. Yo, yeah, Mo's, was like so long ago. Do you still eat Moe's? Are you a Chipotle guy now? Oh, that, no, like, I go salsa you? fresca. Oh, okay. You're yeah. going OG. Yeah. <laughs> like yeah, the real 100%. shit. Oh, yeah. I'll hell put yeah. the money up for it <laughs> okay. every time. I don't. I'm, I am Hispanic. You'd think I would like better food than Moe's, but no, what? Moe's is goaded. <laughs> Moe's oh, is the best. Man. Chipotle is a close second, and I'm not bold enough to venture out <laughs> much Oh, no, of course. Yeah, yeah, I get that. I mean, Moe's is good. I'll put that. The, the, they're like, uh, what do you call it? The queso yeah. is just stupid beyond everyone else's case so it's not it. even a competition and the chips are free instead of chipotle they're fucking three dollar chips and exactly I, I ain't got time for three dollar chips yep. we do have time for bearing point though oh yeah uh, the point i want to start before we get into all the bullshit here uh june 15th we are co-headlining with edict with edict uh, i yep. believe it's in bristol in bristol at bleachers hell yes have yeah. you played there before i've never played there i said the, this band is my first time ever playing connecticut seriously i've played the Webster a few times, and then mm-hmm. I played Point Beach throwback to the, you know, oh my the throwback. Oh, my God, Point Beach, yeah. dude, that's the best place on earth. Yeah, those are, like, the only places I've played in Connecticut, and then once once I got up with them, they were they, I've been everywhere in Connecticut now. Hell, yes. Damn, yeah. Point Beach and the Webster is kind of all you need of Connecticut. That is, to Seriously, me, the yeah. perfect summary of Connecticut. Yeah, if, those are the ones. If anyone was like, yo, I need to go to two Connecticut shows, be like, you probably should go to the Webster because it's the one, but, like, Point Beach. Yeah. <laughs> Find well, a way. Point Beach was, like, just on... Oh, Gosh, I miss it so much. <laughs> yep. The vibes were immaculate. Yep. Everybody there used to mosh hard. We used to kind of, you know, everyone kind of had to security themselves. <laughs> yeah. And it, it, was, was, it was wild. It was the most DIY venue possible. Like there yeah, was seriously. no security, no staff, like just just the kids. Yeah, it was madness. <laughs> just madness the whole time. I loved it. Hell yes. Thankfully, we've grown out of that. But there is some part of me that's like, those might have been the glory years. We might have yeah. we might have missed it already. We might have been the way down. I miss it. But, but yeah, so we're going to be we're gonna be at uh, Bleachers. And that's going to be a cool time. We're a co-headline. And uh, we're with Cold Case. Uh, Hard Target and a couple other bands. It's going to be really sick. Hell yeah. So you know how much tickets are or where people can get them? Uh, any of that stuff? 15 and they're at the door. Hell yeah. Super easy. love that. Yeah. That, easy. The early stuff is easy too when you can like sell the tickets early, but at the door, everyone just comes. You know what I mean? It, you know, there's no stress on them. Mm-hmm. No one has to worry about the pre sales and the exactly, numbers and all that yeah. bullshit. Just that show messy. up, buy your ticket, and have a good time. Hell yes. <laughs> Fight some people, have some fun out That's there. That's it. Fight some people and just go at it. That's Hell it. Yes, yeah. The very important shit, yeah, is nuts. I'm so, 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 so stoked to hear them release music with your tracks on it. I assume that's in the works. I assume that's the next oh, step of this process. Yeah. Here. But I am eager <laughs> to hear what the fuck's happening because, yeah, what they've got going is already so sick. Yeah. I they are so heavy. Yeah. Well, I used to just go and watch them because mm-hmm. I was like, they have to be one of the heaviest bands I've mm-hmm. heard around. It just they just get so ridiculous. <laughs> yeah. And then and then yeah, and then they were like, Hey, we need a vocalist. Are you uh you into it? Mm-hmm. I just left Liminal and I was like, you know what? I would love that. I was like, let's go for it. That rules. I was wondering how you guys crossed paths, because yeah, it seems like the timing worked out perfectly. Where yeah. it just seemed like they needed someone right when you needed someone as well. Yeah, I, it was like a, a month break from when Liminal broke up, mm-hmm. and then I went and seen them with Vomit Forth at the Webster, yep. and they were like, come to a guestie. I was like, yeah, why not? That's fine. And then right after that, they were like, all right, we need a vocalist. Would just join, and I was like, oh, Okay, I guess. Damn, yeah, they were like so straightforward, too. They like pulled me outside and they were like, You're the guy. And I was like, What do you mean? They were like, You are the guy. And I was like, well, What does that mean? They were like, You in or you out? And this is their exact wording, so it's ominous. And I was like, Sure, I guess I know exactly what you're talking about. Yeah. I don't know how much I'm supposed to share here. I was working on a project with them in the past, and it never ended up coming to fruition, so yeah, yeah I'll leave some things vague there but my impression then was the same as yours is like no bullshit they're going to tell you exactly what they want exactly, exactly how it's going to be and it's yeah it's all great it makes life so easy for me because it's like okay all the cards on the table here is yeah yes. now i can make an yeah, informed make a real decision. choice yeah instead of yeah 
I assume sometimes bands are joining like, so what do you what do you got going on? He's like, no, dude, fuck it. <laughs> yeah. uh, ask me on a date or don't ask me on. Yeah, like, exactly. Bullshit. Tell yeah. me you want it or you don't want it. Otherwise, <laughs> I'm going to move on. Yes. Yeah. But you did. And I'm glad that all worked out. What was like the first practice? Like, yeah, what's the process of joining a band? It always seems like a, a nightmare. And I feel like for for me as a video person, I almost enjoy it. I think I'm like biased here. I'm like the odd black sheep here where to me, it feels like I join a new band every month almost. Whereas I'm working yeah. on a music video cycle. It's like. Yeah, you come to me with the idea, and that's when I join the band. And then the release day, I leave the band effectively for yeah. six months, and I'm just doing this constantly. And I, I really enjoy it. I think it gives me an opportunity to like try a lot of new creative styles, and I get to like, yeah, learn how other people work. And I feel like it all benefits me. But I know that, yeah, it is also a scary process to join a band yeah, and get is. on board with guys who already have a culture established, already have a way of doing things. Like, yeah, what has that process been like? So for me, at least with Bearing Point, it's been kind of back and forth. Mm -hmm. I'm having a hard time adjusting to their pace. Mm -hmm. Not that it's a bad thing. They're older guys. Yep. They they are married. <laughs> yes. They have kids. Yeah. They have a whole, you know, they have a life outside of this. Mm -hmm. And they're not they're not as fast paced as I was. You know, I'm still <clears throat> I'm still without kids and like <laughs> living like a free life. So I'm like yeah. all of my money into the band. Let's just go at it. I don't need diapers. Full. Yeah, seriously. I'm like, let's just go for it. And yeah. they're like, hold on, wait a minute, pull it back. Mm -hmm. We gotta get some things in order and then we'll move forward. So I'm like, oh, so you, we we move we move slow and steady. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, you know what? This is actually kind of nice. I'm not always stressed out about it. I, you know, we meet up twice a week Hell yeah. and like well, that's more than most bands already yeah that's great yeah. yeah it's nice i mean because you know we have a wednesday and we have a sunday we get together Beautiful. wednesday is usually like a me the drums and like guitar and like we'll just get together we'll play the set a couple times mm -hmm. we might work on some of the new stuff uh we'll write iron out all the small bits and then sunday everyone gets together and that's the big like we're practicing mm -hmm. we're, we're we're with the whiteboard we got all the dates and ideas and everything together and yeah, they're they're really meticulous. So when I first got with them, I was like, this is a breath of fresh air. It seems like it. Yeah, it seems like the the band, the most common band trajectory is racing to get to the next deadline. And it's yeah. like, I feel like we all start this to get away from deadlines. We all start this because we're so stressed out by the deadlines that are imposed on us everywhere else. And deadline is such a general term. But yeah, all the bills, all the bullshit, whatever. Exactly. And it's like you join the band as a way to like, let me just keep be with my homies. And then you get in there and go, okay, by June 1st, we need six songs. Yeah. By June 10th, <laughs> we're going to have a tour booked. And it's like, brother, brother. Like, yeah, yeah. It's good to be driven, but we got to be patient. We got to be realistic with how this thing yes, can, can like grow there's, here. There's things that we need to do before we get to those steps. Mm -hmm. They understand that very well. So they're like, that's great. You know, let's just. One thing at a time, yeah. we'll do this, then we'll do that. Yes. But let's not even talk about that. Let's just get this done. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, okay. And it works. Yes. It works. Yes. Hell yeah. I know the, so then there's, it's been working evidently. And I'm using the show with uh, Oceano opening the Palladium. Oh, yeah. <laughs> it's like, yeah. clearly it's working because whatever the fuck happened that night is beautiful. That is as yeah. good of a night as you can have. It was, uh, min give me the context. Oh, yeah. So I believe it's opening for Oceano. Yeah. Yeah. We, uh, it was, it was surprised. It was weird because there was, there was a lot of bills that weren't our bands that weren't on the bill. So like we had we had no idea up until like two days prior what the the lineup was gonna be. Um, it's it's gonna it's it's passing my brain. I didn't even get to meet these bands because they were in and out. Mm -hmm. um, but the two bands that played first were super sick. But I've never heard of them. I didn't even know they were playing. We got there, we're like setting up, and then we we're like, oh, there's two other bands. We were like, no, <laughs> what okay, nice fine, know, I guess. Yeah, that's cool. Whatever. <laughs> So we set up, um, and we were just chilling for a while. Like, we got there early. We were, like, talking to Maddie with Euclid because Euclid also played at the show. Shout, Shout out, out, Euclid. Um, and, like, it was a cool time. We hung out. But, yeah, the, the it was crazy. The first band went on, and that room was, I think, like, 75% filled. Damn. I was, like, early like this, and it's that. I was like, oh, this is going to be a what crazy day of the week was night. it? What? What day of the week was it? It was a Saturday. It was a Saturday, okay, yeah. Okay, so yeah. it's a little room. Yeah, yeah, Oh, my yeah. gosh. It was, yeah, it was crazy. It filled up so quick. People were already moshing. First band, people were moshing. I was like, this is going to be a real good night. What is that? Why do rooms do, like, sometimes you go to the room and it's it's full and still dead. And yeah. so, like, I don't know. What is what is in the water in those rooms? Well, there are nights. Yeah, you just walk in the room and it's already alive. Exactly. And it just makes, I don't, I wish I could understand what makes that happen and how we could recreate that more often. Yeah, I wish that was every show. Yeah. People just show up and then they're like, I'm going to wait. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, why? This band is heavy. Just do something. Yeah. 
I, I don't know why people don't get into it, but I wish everyone else would. It just it's so sick because then you know you start you start on a high note. The whole night goes great mm-hmm. from there. Everyone has a better time, and I am. Uh, I guess I'm speaking out of turn here because I'm for sure standing in the back of the room. That's for <laughs> sure where I am. Like I'm yeah. not the person who's gonna get anything going. But nonetheless, it seems like it's like yo, tough guys. If you're so fucking tough, then prove that you're tough at 7 p.m. Don't wait till 10:30. 10:30 is when the when the fanboys get it, the Fairweather fans get in exactly. there. Exactly. Like, yeah, get in there. If yeah. you're tough, prove it. hundred <laughs> percent, and especially because it's supportive to everyone else in the yeah. show. You, you get those early bands. Mm-hmm. I know what it's like. I mean, I've I've opened so many shows in the last. 12 years of doing this and like yeah i get up there and if like nobody's doing anything i feel that energy and then i feel awkward I can't imagine and, yes. yeah it's just then you're sitting up there and you're like hi we're this band <laughs> from this area please don't hate us yes three songs and you're like just get it done just get it done <laughs> yes they clearly yeah. hate me they didn't listen to that it, part exactly they hate yeah me. so yeah, it's tough but it was a good night so everyone's moshing at first i was like man the first two bands were like metalcore they were like uh like yeah metalcore lighter deathcore and it was the, everyone's going crazy for that. I was like, man, we're about to come in here with this like Acacia strain mixed with like I declare war. Like it's yeah. gonna be it's gonna be heavy. And mm-hmm. so I was like, all right. First song goes on. I was like, you know what? Don't even play the first note yet. I was like, yo, this is not mall metal for little bitches. <laughs> this is war metal made for vendettas. Shout out Vendetta New York City. Um, and I threw that line out there, and the whole room like looked at us, and then the first thing started, and it was madness. Hell yeah. We had like three stage dives in the first song, and I was like, this is how this is gonna go. This is going to be super sick. And then the whole night was just stage dive, crowd surf, stage dive. The mosh was wild. I had to, like, stop doing vocals just to, like, look out and be like, what is happening? <laughs> it was crazy. Yeah. It Damn. was an amazing experience. I like uh, two parts of that. One is, like, the lead by example kind of thing, which is, again, a tacky phrase. And I'm very aware that it sounds tacky. But I think the the evidence there is, like, if you just get on stage and play the first note, I don't know if it starts that way. Yeah. Like, there has to be some moment of you taking a pause and like having the awareness in the moment to take 10 seconds and like, yeah, call everyone a bitch. Yeah. <laughs> and then it's like, oh, there's a thing. And it's one of those of like, yeah, I think vocalists are, I think when you're on stage, it's very easy. If I was on stage, I would expect the crowd to do the thing. Yes. And it's like, no, it is our job to lead the dance. And I think we often want to blame the crowd and be like, oh, it was a dead crowd tonight. And for sure, that yes. must exist. If you play 30 shows, there's going to be yeah a spectrum in there. But yeah. generally speaking, it's like, no, I think if you get on stage and do what you did, that it makes everything better. Like, if yes, there is you, the, set the, you set the tone. There is. And I think, yeah, that boldness there is a skill that's yeah. hard to recognize sometimes. Yeah, that's you know that ties really well into what I said earlier about like when I would get on stage at first and at open shows and mm-hmm. I nothing would happen but it's yeah. because I'd get up there and I we'd start playing and I'd be like I'm expecting you just to feel it and yeah. do it yeah no I have to you know we're entertainers we I have to give you that experience you're mm-hmm. gonna you're gonna react to what I give you I'm not reacting to you and yeah so I never knew it was the opposite way around I started the show off super high note as soon as we got into it they immediately connected and yeah, it just, it was, it was, wow. It I, was amazing. I come from the sports world where we, there's always like this lore of athletes who like were good enough to be professionals, but just never could do it on the court. They always did it like the practice facility, like around their peers, they could yeah. do it, but they couldn't do it in the moment. And I'm wondering like, who is the Will Ramos of like, who can't get on stage? Like there's gotta yeah. be like vocalists out there of like, who don't have that part of the skill. And yeah. we'll never know the talent because they can't do that part of it. But it's like, damn, if we could just get them in a booth and get people to care about them. Seriously. We would hear yeah. the craziest shit. The hard part too is, is like being a vocalist is, it's like every, a lot of people are vocalists. Mm-hmm. Not everyone, but a lot of people are vocalists. Photographer is the same thing. See, I totally relate to you on yeah, this. Yeah. There's not enough bands to take up every vocalist. Mm-hmm. And I think that like, if people keep going after the idea of like uh, of like I only want to do vocals, they're never going to find that position. Mm-hmm. So you kind of got to start elsewhere. But if there were more vocalists that had opportunities in bands, you would see some ridiculous people. Because mm-hmm. I know there's a bedroom vocalist right now who is yeah. doing just amazing things. Yes, and he has no opportunity to get on stage because no one has a, has a spot for him. Yes, I, I guess, just know or her. Yes. I know it. Uh, hopefully, TikTok maybe is the if. For all the evil, for all the for all my dislike of TikTok, maybe yeah. that's the one silver lining of it. It's like, yeah, that's the place where that person could get some traction and get some Seriously, eyes on yeah. them. Uh, but yeah, I'm curious. Yeah, curious about the, how that skill set works. Uh, and I think yeah, for that local band who gets on stage, and to your point, yeah, you get on stage timid, and it's like I get it. But the, when you're that timid, no one else is going to be anything above that. Yeah, and it's yeah, I don't know how you make that leap. And again, I'm not the person who's going to make that leap, and I'm envious of the bands who can do it like yeah. you, where it's like yeah, I don't. If I get on stage, I don't think I would. Have have that clarity of to take those 10 seconds i think my brain would be like first song first song first yeah, song. jump right in and that's not the right move right there's a, a skill there in being present that i think yeah is, yeah works. especially because i mean that that whole the whole idea of playing these shows lately as like a smaller band you don't get 
the privilege of having your stuff set up and then you walk onto the stage, mm-hmm. you have to set it up in front of the crowd. Yes. And that is the most awkward thing ever. Mm-hmm. You know, you come with the dream of like, I, that's as a vocalist, my, all, my dream so is always yes. get up there. You walk up, mm-hmm. the music's already playing. You walk up and you're like, we're whatever. And we're going to do it. Mm-hmm. And like, you know, you think it's gonna be super sick, but then you're up there helping him load. You're helping your drummer <laughs> load up his kit and you're helping everybody do their stuff. And then like everyone's staring at you and you're like, well, that ruins the surprise. <laughs> and like, So you got to separate that somehow. They just seen you setting up. Like how do, how do you separate like, you know, or even doing a line check, they're watching you sound check. Mm-hmm. How do you separate that moment to like, this is the show and you have to like distinguish, all right, you may have watched all of that, but forget that, this is what it is, let's do it. And like, from that moment, that's the that's your chance. Yeah, I have never thought about that. That is a brilliant point and I, you are ever, 100% right that when you get on stage, Three minutes ago, most people thought you were a stagehand. Yeah. Like, if it, most people didn't even know that was the band. They just thought someone was putting stuff on stage, and then it's like, oh, fuck, they're, about to, they're the guys. Yeah. Supposed to, yeah. Damn, I've never thought about that. As you're right, that must be a, a very hard challenge for a local show, and I guess that, that's the one thing the opening band doesn't have to worry about, but the opening band's opening slot sucks for every other reason, so yes. it's like you get to avoid, yeah, you get to play to a room, but that room also is extra tough to win over yeah because all the magic is blown yeah. yeah and that's a really big thing where like i always tell people it is what you make it like uh i, I had this one post it didn't go viral but mm-hmm. it went like scene viral sure and like i was talking about how like opening's not a bad thing mm-hmm. if you're gonna open a show if you get the opportunity to open the show you need to make that opportunity work you're there for a reason just do it this is your job at this point don't think mm-hmm. about it as like a hierarchy of bad band good band or small band big band think of it as like this is a show. It's a it's an entire entertainment piece the whole night. So why would you give anything less than a, than a than a show? You know, mm-hmm. first band on, that's fine. They're tired. They may be cold. It's winter. Summertime. They're hot. They're dying. They're just in there. They didn't get drinks in them yet. That's fine. Who cares? Get up there and just give it everything. Mm-hmm. I used to go back. I mean, two thousand and like eight, two thousand and fifteen. You go see those big tour packages, all stars and all that kind of stuff. The first band wasn't getting on, and they'd be the tour package. That mm-hmm. first band's not yeah. getting on. They're doing small energy. They're not. Hi guys, we're yeah. gonna, you know, they're, they get up there and they're like, we're getting it from the minute. Chelsea Grin used to play Warp Tour at seven. Yeah, you know what yeah. I mean? Like yeah. super early. Come on now. Yeah. You, you have to like pick the time. You have to, you know, it's just separating the moment. You mm-hmm. do. You really have to. Damn. That's interesting. And then uh, back to the Oceano show. So you get on stage. Yeah. You survive this moment of convincing the crowd that you are yeah. the guy you say you are. Uh, everything goes great. Is there anything that happens on stage that we wouldn't have known about? Like any tech issues you guys were having? Any sound issues? Anything that like, yeah, I'm always fascinated by how much goes on on stage that me as the audience member is never aware of. Yeah. Uh, and I'm curious that, yeah, oftentimes in these moments, it's like, it was the best show, and from outside, it seemed like the best, and on stage, one of our guitars didn't work. We didn't have a click. Some blah, blah, blah. A yeah. string broke, blah, 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 whatever. Uh, any versions of those that happened? Oh, 100%. <laughs> we, uh, so we're not a backtrack band yet. We're, we do everything raw, but... We do have a sample pad that has like the bass track and like our mm-hmm. intro. Yep. And it's a really cheap pad. <laughs> I mean, like Collins over he he's our drummer. He's said it multiple times that like he did not spend a lot of money on this pad. He just got it to have it to <laughs> yep. use it. Yep. And sometimes, and he, you know, when you're in the moment playing, you hit so hard oh, at yeah. things, especially yeah. a drummer. Mm-hmm. When he hits the pad, either both pads will go off. Maybe one will go off, which is great. But if both pads go off, our intro theme will start playing. <laughs> and it's like a boom bap rap song. So it has like drums and everything in it. So you hear it. Yep. Um, we're in the middle of a breakdown. I think it was like our third song in, in the middle of the breakdown. And then he hits the bass drop. And then all I hear is. Doom, doom, doom. <laughs> and I was like, whoa. I was like, what's going on? I was like, yo. He had to like turn it down and stop it and then fix it in the middle of playing. I was like, you're, you're wild. Yeah, that's funny. That's where Knock Loose got the reggaeton breakdown from. See, <laughs> you guys inspired it. You were that's step ahead. That's insane. Yeah, it just it was crazy. And uh, yeah, we all heard it, and we were like, just don't react. We, everyone looked at each other. We're just like, keep going. <laughs> it was yeah, it was bad because it's loud too. Yeah. Like, you could hear it. Yeah, yeah, it's tough. Damn. And was that your? That wasn't your first show then. That was like second or third show with Bearing Point. I say it. I I say it's my first show because that was like the first real debut. Mm-hmm. I did play a show with them before that. Okay, we played Harrisburg, PA. Um, I don't remember. Oh, yeah, it was with Court Order. They're a PA band, uh, and you know, it was a it was a pretty relaxed show. It was it was pretty chill. I don't think the venue allowed moshing, so we didn't we didn't get to like get you know our normal experience. Sure. So like I you know it felt weird and like it was also I think it was like a I want to say it was a Sunday and it was like really early. So we were like it was like 
kind of dead and then like nobody moved. Mm-hmm. And so we were just kind of like chalk that up to like, we didn't play that. <laughs> it just didn't happen. <laughs> Fair. We were like, okay. Like, I mean, I, you know, it was cool because we got to chill with all the homies and like, there's a, you can smoke inside the bars in PA. So we were chilling with everyone. It was a good time. It was like a homie hangout. And then like, yes. Yeah, oh yeah. It was crazy. We, we didn't know that until we went upstairs and there was like ashtrays inside and I smoke cigarettes. So we're like, we're like, what is this? And we're like, we're like well, let me get a drink and let me smoke a cigarette. Of course, yeah. Yeah, yeah sitting there. I was like, I'm going to get in trouble. I'm like, every time someone walked up the stairs, I'm like, I, let me put this away. I yeah. did a run of shows. We came up through the South and yeah, it was smoking in bars. Yeah. As a Connecticut kid, it was the crazy, like, it felt like walking into a time capsule, just yeah. walking into these tiny local bars where no one is under the age of 70 and everyone is, yeah, 40 drinks in and 100 cigarettes yep. in, just yep. like the craziest local bars. Yeah, it was crazy. It was yeah. weird. But yeah, so we did play that show, um, and How'd... it was it was a uh, it was it was all right. It it was also like a long trip, so we were all tired after getting there, and yeah, we just we're just like we played it, but it is what it is. That was the first that was the first bearing point show for me because okay. that was like I got the real experience. So we were just chatting about how it's, yeah, not the crowd's fault. No, it's your job to get them going. Yes. Yeah. Certainly, yeah, this one isn't a sold out palladium. It's an empty room. They don't allow moshing. It's not. But how would you compare your performance like in the in the local show to the to the Oceano show? Like, do you feel like you were able to do the same thing? Or is it like tough to bring that energy when the energy isn't being brought mutually? Oh, no, I, I um I've kind of beat it in my head at this point after doing it so long that I can't let uh, a sleepy crowd mm-hmm. get to me. No matter what, someone's going to take take away from whatever I give mm-hmm. and there are people that don't mosh. There's people that don't dance. Some people just like to sit in the back and watch. Mm-hmm. Those are the people that I'm trying to wow. I mean, the people that mosh, I love it. Thank you. That's great. Course, we do yeah. this for that. But like the people that don't, they're going to sit in the back. They're going to watch. And if you're up there and you show like some type of, type of resentment towards what's happening, mm-hmm. they're going to be like, well, this band was a dickhead. They didn't, they weren't having a good time. They were boring. The music was okay. But like, mm-hmm. what was that? You know, I never want to give that. I don't care if we're playing to one person uh, or if we're playing a, 2000 people it's it's going to be the same energy every single time because someone in that room is going to watch us and they're going to like it yes i think there's two things one is we don't know who's in the room right like these all look like people but one of them could be fearless as anr for all i know yeah i have no who is that person i have no idea who the person is that fearless that signs the checks someone must one of them must be there and uh, I don't know if they're at every local show, but like, uh, yeah, maybe not, whatever. Someone important is the example there. And the other piece is like, when you're playing a show, the job is to make people come back. That is yes. what you are doing it for. And I think we like to talk about streaming numbers and that's great, but that's to make people come to shows. Like the whole thing is to come back to the show. Mm-hmm. If I see you and you're boring, you're never going to be past that. And there are bands now that I am thinking back that I saw at VFWs back in the day that are now just successful. Yeah. And when I saw them, I wasn't impressed by the way that they brought it. And so now seeing them succeed, it's like, Really? Them? Yeah. And of course, it's me, right? They've they've grown up. They have outgrown whatever that yeah petulant teenage version exactly, of themselves. Yeah. But my taste in my mouth is still like them. Yeah. And that doesn't go away. Yeah. And, that's and a, it will be there forever because yep. that's the first that's the first impression you got. Yes. And I, it was exactly those shows that I'm thinking of. Yeah. It's 30 people in the room, 25 of them in other bands. I'm a photographer. Yeah. There's like two people who actually bought yes, tickets to yeah. like just to come. And yes. But in those shows, yeah, we don't know. And everyone ages. Everyone grows up. That's the other thing I've, I think I've learned in the Connecticut scene is like the people I met at 16 are now like like Jay, Jay Grandel and half-hearted. Like he yeah. is now marketing. He's doing shit. Like all the current guys are gone. All the yeah. boundaries guys are gone. Like there are so many people you meet and it's like, Oh, I had no idea that was going to be you. And I'm glad I was nice to you back then because I still want to be nice to you. But yeah. if I was a dick to you back then, I'm yeah, there's no way. I'm, exactly. Have any yeah. good connection. Now. There would be no connection. And I, I, you know, I say that all the time just cause you know, in coming from the New York city scene, mm-hmm. when like, there was a lot of beef. There's a lot of problems in the New York City scene. People always go back and forth. Yeah. And I got so used to like no camaraderie. Mm-hmm. I got just got used to people like kind of hating each other and mm-hmm. this it never went anywhere. Most of the bands that like were in that position, yep. they would they would play and then they'd get kind of popular. Mm-hmm. And then of course the scene didn't support them. So then they would fall off. And you see it a lot when bands like have real camaraderie, they show up for their friends, they support each other, and like everyone kind of works as a unit. It just flourishes. Yep. Everyone goes up. They really do. And that's the same thing. If you just show a simple respect to everybody, you're also going to move up with them. Mm-hmm. The that's same the same way you just said with like with currents and with, with boundaries. Yes. All those homies, I mean, they they came from the same places we all came from. They played the same rooms we played. 
I don't want to discredit their talent. Certainly their talent is what has done the bulk of the work, but yeah. they're also all very well liked. Yes. And they the talent doesn't get a chance to shine if they are not well liked. And exactly. Again, I don't want to it's not that their popularity I don't want to discredit anything. Obviously, yeah. they, they have earned everything they have, but part of earning it is being likable and easy to yeah. work with. And for people like photographers like me, it's like I was fun to go shoot them. I enjoyed yeah. going to. And what that means is that there are other people like me going and saying, Oh, hey, look at them. I'm gonna show this band to my audience. Yeah. And again, not that I made current currents would have done it without me, but yeah. maybe one person, maybe two people. And over the course of hundreds of photographers over their lifetime, now decades in, that adds up. Yes. And these little interactions, yeah, trickle and snowball. And I think it's I think it's easy to lose sight of that when you're at the venue and there's it, 20 it, people it really there. And it's like, yo, fuck you, motherfucker, yeah. in the back, dude. Do something. Stop yeah. being bored. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, it's our job to not let that person get in our head. Exactly. Hell yeah. It's, it's really interesting, too, just because like being popular or being well-liked is more important than people realize. Um, there's a bunch of new bands coming out of the Connecticut area, brand new, you know, putting out their first singles. And like some of them are people I'm – becoming close friends with and I tell them all the same thing you have to talk to people you have to get into this into like whatever little groups there are you have to find people to talk to and just get entwined with what's going on because you're never going to find your way out of the the hole that you're in mm -hmm. as like there I mean there's 2,000 or 200,000 songs uploaded to Spotify every day damn yeah you're not gonna you're not gonna make it on your own I don't know what I would have guessed if I would have guessed higher or lower like, I don't know what to make of like, it. Yeah, I think that's the U.S. standard, too. I think that's the the statistic for the U.S., just just our state Jesus. or yeah, our country. Yeah, yeah. That's, so it's it's really rough. Yeah. There are so many songs being uploaded to Spotify every day. Your song, the chances that it's going to actually make it out somewhere is so rough, especially not with editorial playlists. You have to rely on your local scene, and you have to build your own fan base. Eduardo, my my uh, my photographer, he's, so he's – He's one of my photographers that shot my older bands, and he's a guitarist in a band that we have coming up soon called Tarsal out of Jersey. Um, his his growth was he was just a kid that went to shows. Mm -hmm. He started liking photography. He got into it, and he made those connections, and now he's touring with Angel Maker. He's touring with, he toured with uh, Boarded, and he put himself in the position to do that. Mm -hmm. Same thing with everyone else in bands. You speak to people. You get close to them. Eventually... You're in the same circles. I've, I don't know how many people have messaged me in the last two months now that like Bearing Point and they like me, and they're like, "Let's set up a show." Okay, fine. We're, that's great. Let's do it. New York City. We'll go. We'll go to PA. We'll do Jersey. You know, mm -hmm. it's that's how it works. You need to talk to people and you yep. need to make those connections. It's a people business. One hundred. It really is. It's yes. more than music at this point. Yeah. Before, I, I mean, the guys in Bearing Point tell me all the time their whole scene was just you went, you played shows, people liked you, you got big. It was like that. That was it. You're good. But now it's like you have to be, you know, you have to have the friends. You have to be able to talk to people. And if your music's not good, it's not going to go anywhere because that's the reality of people liking music. Yep. But the trifecta of all of it, huge, massive. Yes. You just, you'll blow everywhere. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You might. You certainly <laughs> might. No, I feel you though. That there is like the romantic, romanticization, romant, whatever. I'm yeah. not saying that word correctly, but we know the word <laughs> I'm trying to say. Yeah. Um, of the artistic process of it's like I just want to be pure. I just want to make good things, and people are gonna like the good things. And it's yeah. like they might. Yeah. Maybe. Yeah. But probably. And they're never gonna see it though. Probably not. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> that's why you know what, Jason. Jason's job is so important, and that's the yeah. same thing. You, if you got to meet Jason, I know he'll answer people now. He's yeah. very, he's very, very susceptible. He's very easy to contact. But if you knew, if you knew Jason in the past, and you got to grow up and watch his growth, and you got to really know him, and you message him about this kind of work, he's so easy to get to get to work with, and he, he does such a great job. Yep. That just getting out there and being able to get your music in front of the mass is what's going to get you where you need to be. And you can't do it without knowing people like that. You know, I mean, you're going to put a song out. No one's going to see it. You're going to put a song out, hit up your buddy Jason and be like, yo, mm -hmm. do this. All right, cool. Shell out the cash. Bing, bang, boom. Now you're you're on ads. You're on Google ads, YouTube ads. People see your stuff because you had the connection to do it. Mm -hmm. yeah. I, I love scrolling through comments and it's like, oh, I saw this ad on a bear tooth. And it's like, Jay. Yeah. <laughs> that, yeah. It might not have been Jay, but it's Jay. It's yeah, like 99% yeah. of the time it was Jay. Exactly. <laughs> you and you always... just, it just works. It really does. Yeah. It's incredible to watch the growth that he's had. And yeah, the success he's been able to help bands find, I think is incredible as well. Yeah. Um, I'm curious. The other piece of this is the content aspect of this. So it is, yeah, a networking game, a people game. And I think the other piece of this that I think you've done a great job of is putting vocal covers out and putting out oh, other yeah. content of like, it's so easy. Again, in this uh, in my own artistic purity, like I'm bad at putting out music videos. 
video clips. I think if you go to my Instagram right now, you might not know that I'm still doing music videos. Like, yeah. I, I think, uh, yes, I'm not good at that. And I've thankfully I have some videos coming up soon. So I'm happy to yeah, okay. get posted and share again. <laughs> but like, that is something I am not good at. And I've so noticed you are seem better at it than I am. Yeah. Uh, I'm curious in your two cents there. Like, does it, is that something you are happy to do? Is it an annoying task that is a necessary evil to do? Is it, yeah, is it fun to go flex on people or is it just like a, I don't want to, but I know I need to get this done because it's part of being a band right now. It's kind of a mix. I would say it's a mix. So my first manager, or well, I guess now he's my most recent manager. um, My most recent manager drilled content into my brain, Mm -hmm. how important it was to like build a personal brand so that like people would watch the things you do. Because if they watch the things you do, they're going to watch the things that you're associated with, Mm -hmm. including a band. Yep. And that was really important to me because I was like, at first, you know, my first couple bands, I dropped covers just to kind of be like, I'm a vocalist, you know, and I would add random people on Facebook and be like, I'm a vocalist. Let me drop the, <laughs> the video. And like yeah, people would know. Yeah. Now it's more like when I have small people that, I, well, I do have a small dedicated group of people that follow me. And that's great. I appreciate every one of them. And they watch my covers. And then they're like, you're such a sick vocalist. Oh my God, you're in this band. That's so suit. That's like they're gonna listen to them, yeah. and it you know it's just a way for me to bring the people that w- I watch me or people that can watch me and bring them into what I'm doing. I think there's also the sense that we are more inclined to support our friends, and mm-hmm. by watching your covers, I'm not becoming your friend necessarily, but you are closer to friend than stranger. Yes, and it's this like weird like parasocial process that I think also happens, and I'm laughing at myself like this happens to me with podcasts where I saw like a. It was a it was a meme and it was a poster of like like it was like a picture from like a subway I guess so like yeah. the ad on the sub wall of the subway was like three kids eating a popsicle and there's like a fourth kid like eating a popsicle like laughing along like he's with his friends but yeah. the friends are the poster and it was like oh that's podcast like you just listen to your friends talk and laugh along as if you're involved in it yeah but you're not um, I forget where this tangent was going and why I brought this up um, oh the parasocial thing yeah. so like in that same breath it's like. But I listen to podcasts, I am more likely to go to their comedy show or to go to their whatever they're doing just because it's like, oh, I'm closer to your friend than I would have been if I had only consumed your art. Exactly. And I think the same thing is happening here of like, yeah, it pays. That's where the podcast came from. Like, to be very blunt, like that's yeah. where this thing has value to me. It's like, it's a fun thing. It's a, yeah, it's a very exciting thing. But it's like, this feels like the best way to communicate what I am and what I'm about to people where I've yeah. tried like the, here's 10 beginner photography tips. And it's like, that's not me. I, that's just, that's not how my brain works. That's not my yeah. character. That's not me. I am a... I'm a long form. I like a lot of words. I'm going to ramble yeah. <laughs> and I'm going to get my point across. And it's important to me that I get it across and exactly how I want to get it across. Exactly. Uh, and this is how that works. And so it became, yeah, like a, a beautiful synergy there of like, well, I want to do it. And it seems like it's probably the good thing for growth. So perfect. Let's do it. Yeah. And it all works uh, out together. Yes. A hundred percent. But yeah, I, it would probably be a business manager might've said, Hey, you might've put that time into making music video clips instead. And it's like, yeah. eh, well, that's not much fun. So yeah, exactly. And you know, but the thing is content is <clears throat> it's so hard to actually try to find the stuff that's engaging, mm-hmm. especially with like clips and stuff. I, mean, I don't know how many times I've tried to tease music videos yeah. and I'll like throw a clip out and be like, this will get them. Yep. And then like, I know for a fact, cause I understand the algorithm at this point, people yep. are on Instagram, they're swiping. I definitely know that they see my video. They're like, <laughs> and they just keep going. <laughs> it's, not it's, boobs, not boobs, yeah, not boobs. Yeah, see, exactly. You just you yeah. got to find the things that grab out, and it's so hard to do it with stuff like that. Yeah. So sometimes, like, these kind of things, I mean, like, just, like, with your setting and, like, I mean, just everything about this was kind of what captures people. I mean, I'm going to stop and watch just because, like, I'm like, wow, that looks cool. Oh, okay. Oh, yeah, look, wait, that's one of my – I know him. I know him, too. Okay, <laughs> yeah. well, we're good. Yeah, yeah. so, you know, you, and know, you get stuck into it. There is also the weird problem here of, like – I should be promoting more controversial stuff. Like the mm. clips to that point of like, uh, if the first word was like, Lorna Shore stinks, like we're going to get more viewers yeah. than if it's like, tell me about your first show, right? Yeah. And I'm always toying this line and I'm sure with vocal covers with any band content, there's the same thing of like, we could go Falling Universe. We could just push all the red buttons. Yeah. Yeah. That that is one that is one option here. Yeah, that grabs. I mean, it, <laughs> and, it grabs immediately. Yeah, and I think yeah, anyone has these buttons we could push, and it's always a game of like, I don't want to push the buttons, but they're, they're kind of tempting sometimes. Yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah, like they are. <laughs> yeah. And I, I will talk about it all day long because I think like there's such a good and bad side about those things. And like when you talk about it, you you can in, in terms of content for what we're talking about, you can take the good parts of the conversation <clears throat> and you can make it something so that people will be like, oh, what are they talking about? I like this too. Mm-hmm. Or you can bring it up and have it be like, maybe you're saying something bad. You said falling in reverse. I can always talk about how like 
you know, maybe maybe Ronnie's content sometimes in the rap he gets is terrible and people talk horribly about him because he did this, because he did that. But then I can also be like, he's the first vocalist I heard. He's mm -hmm. the first person that inspired me to want to do this kind of stuff. And, you know, so either way, you're going to watch that and I'm going to react to like, he did, he did, he inspired me too. Mm -hmm. Or I'm going to be like, yeah, he's kind of a kind of a piece of shit. You yes. know what I mean? Like, I'm going to watch this. Either yeah. way, you're getting good pull. And, People are watching it. And my morale is like, I'd rather upload you talking about burying point. Like, yeah, exactly. But... But that's not going to get the most clicks here, unfortunately. Yes, yeah, I wish exactly. that was the case. I wish everyone cared about Bearing Point as much as they care about Falling Under first. But yeah. <laughs> numerically, that's not how the algorithm works. At the it's moment. tougher, yeah. Uh, so it's an interesting thing. And yeah, I guess with vocal covers, there's probably the same thing of like, uh, yeah, trying to flex. And it's like, you don't want to just be uh, flashy and no substance, I guess. Like yeah. we talk about drummers like being in the pocket. And I guess maybe there's an analogy here for vocalists of like, you want to be in the pocket to some degree. Like it, yes. it can't all be flash. You have to show that you have the meat and potatoes, but probably that doesn't do as many views as the crazy gnarl from left to suffer yes. or whatever. Yeah. So that was a big thing for me. Cause like I haven't done, um, a to the hellfire cover. Mm -hmm. Everyone has, Everyone <laughs> every has. vocalist has done one and they have and, tried yeah. to do something new to it. And yeah. it's like, no, it's good. Yeah, <laughs> it's, it's good. Yeah. Exactly. And I, you know what? I appreciate it. Cause that is talent. You know, mm -hmm. these new techniques and everything are so they're hard. I, I can barely do half of them, sure. but like, when people are doing that in my head, the way my mind works, I was like, go against the grain. Mm -hmm. I'm going to do a cover from 2010. Mm -hmm. I was like, they're talking about this new thing. I'm going to bring up the old thing. And of course, the comments under it were like, oh, my God, I haven't heard from this band in so long. Oh, this was so sick. You sound mm -hmm. just like him. I'm like, there we go. Yep. That's what I wanted. Yes. And it works. Yes. It's great. But you circumvent the, the rat race. Yeah. Yeah. But at the same time, it's like vocal covers don't get you what you need mm -hmm. it does for some people 100 percent. some people do vocal covers and they get an amazing growth from it i yeah. mean you can build a whole influential thing like uh johnny growls okay his entire tiktok with him doing vocal covers and then him doing um vocal content with like the reading comments you know with scream same thing that um that those two guys did uh dickie Austin Dickey and the other guy, I forget his name now. Um, but yeah, they did that and that worked out great for them. It can yeah. work. You just have to do it the right way. Yep. I still haven't figured that out. I keep doing covers of old songs mm -hmm. and like hoping that like someone's going to see it and just, but that's not the point of me doing it. Yep. I wanted it to be like people to see my, my talent. Now it's more like I want people to view my range. I yep. want them to see like I can, I can, and I do Ch an old Chelsea Green cover and I'm not doing it because I, I I prefer Alex over Tom. I'm doing it because I want you to see the highs. I want you to know that I can do these super screechy highs. I'll do an I Declare War cover over like a Lorna Shore cover because I want you to see that my lows can be super in depth. I mean, you know, or I can do fast vocals, so I'll do an Attila cover. <laughs> I can do cleans, so yeah. I did like a Sleep a sleep Theory cover. Oh, yeah. You know, I, I'm just trying to showcase the range rather than like, you know, I'm not... It's, I, you know what? You're right. It is a flex. It because a flex is a good word. At first, I was gonna be like, I don't know about flex, but flex is a good word because I am. I'm definitely like. As you should be. You yeah, earned it. Yeah, yeah, I'm definitely like. Absolutely. I'm all this. Yeah, <laughs> like, that's yeah. what content is to some degree, right? Yeah, yeah you're exactly. Showing off yeah. In some capacity. Um, I think there's also. Oh, I had such a good thought there, and I lost it. I have no, no idea what the fuck what? I was gonna say, but it's okay. Um, life goes on. Maybe if I keep talking, it'll come back <laughs> into my brain. Come on, Peter. <laughs> think, buddy. Think. <laughs> Um, oh, I have man. no idea. Something about content, whatever. Who cares? Life goes on. Um, cool. Uh, you said 12 years you've been doing vocal stuff. Uh, I'm really bummed that I lost it. I feel like we were in a good rhythm there, and I have no idea where the fuck I was going with it. Oh. But I think I just need to move on for, yeah, it's all <laughs> for right. the sake of life. Um, fuck, whatever. Anywho, um, where does the vocal start for you? So I, you said like 12 years you've been doing this? Yeah, uh, somewhere around 12. I think 12 years. I started in seventh grade. So this is, I'm 25, seventh grade. I was. I remember my oh, point. Oh, yeah. Forget what I was Bless. saying. Let's go. Bless, come on, dude. come yes. on. I will hear about, seven, I want to hear all about seventh grade. That is yes, my, I'm my ready. comfort zone. Um, uh, I talk a lot about on here about how this industry is a race to be second. Yeah. Uh, and I think that the To the Hellfire cover is a perfect example of that. Of everyone, it's like, oh, it popped. Let me do the thing so I can yes. go viral as well. And that becomes a diminishing return, but I get it. It's a much safer bet. Like, this is all the remakes we're seeing in Hollywood and all the movies. It's like, mm -hmm. this is why you make whatever, number two, because number one did good, and it's easier to take a chance on number two than to make something totally new. Yeah. But the context, the goal here is, like, 
is something new. Like, I don't think you yes. can get anything new by doing to the hellfire again. And by doing to the hellfire, really what you're proving is that you were less than Will Ramos. Like, yes, not, I, I, I'm sure that someone out there has done a vocal cover that I would prefer to the song, but I haven't heard it. Yeah. Right. I think generally speaking, that song is so beloved that what we're getting, and it's so new, like we haven't, I think with the old, like I declare war stuff, it's like we're removed enough that we can hear someone else do it and be like, oh, that's sick. That's yes. a new way to do it. Exactly. But with Lauren, it's like, it's all so new and so fresh. It's like, you can't do a sleep token cover right now in my yeah. brain. Like it's, they are still so fresh and like, we're still figuring out what they are that doing a cover. It's like, you're always in second place. And yeah. by, I think your strategy of finding like your own personal covers is a much like healthier way to find your own sound and find your own brand. And I think yeah. that like, yeah, good things are often mixes of two popular ideas. And our job is to then, yeah, follow yeah. our instinct where it's so much easier to stick with one of the two popular ideas. And it's like, no, be brave. Let yeah. these two paths cross. And yeah, who knows? It might not work and it might not be as surefire to views as a to the Hellfire cover. But like, yeah. there's not a glass ceiling on it named Will Ramos, who is exactly. better than you right now. Yes. I mean, <laughs> you also risk yourself falling down. I, I use this analogy a lot, but like, imagine like a a water slide that splits off at the end mm -hmm. and one side is like a pit of knives and the other side is sick water. Yep. So like you risk yourself falling down that slide every time you do something new like that, because mm -hmm. you're either gonna, okay. Think about uh good burger Two. good burger was a great movie. Super mm -hmm. sick. Hilarious. We love Keenan and Kel. Great. But good burger Two was not so great. And mm -hmm. people will say the same thing or they'll say it was great. It was a, it was perfect. I needed that. Yes. Okay. Now, To the Hellfire was a great song. Now, once you do that cover, you have either one of two ways you're going. <laughs> you're either going to get some real bad comments and you're going to hate yourself, yep. or you're going to get some good comments and you're going to feel good. Do I want to risk that? Nah. Yeah. I'm just going to stick to, like, what is actually going to work. We haven't, you know, they haven't heard of I Declare War in years. Great. I'm going to bring it up. Yes. I'm going to do it. Because yeah. now you're not going to, you know, you're not going to be like, well, you're not him. You're going to be like, that was such a good thing to relive. And you sounded so sick doing it. Yeah. You and know? It, yeah. You're right. It's scarier and it's harder, but I think it's the better investment. And I try and keep the same thing in mind on the music videos where like yeah. my, my music video pet peeve, um, that I'm always nervous to talk openly on here because I don't want to be critical of other people, but no. the, uh, my pet peeve is always like white wall music oh, videos. Oh my, thank God. <laughs> like, it's just like, man, we've seen them. And like, I, yeah. I, uh, I, I laugh as I'm writing something right now that kind of involves one, but I think it's a new enough spin on it and a small enough detail in the video mm -hmm. that's not a significant thing. But like, there are these tropes in music videos and that to me is the pinnacle of it. Of like, they look cool. I'm not mad, no. but like, I can't name one I've seen because I've seen so many of them. Yes. And I think with a music video, it's like, Again, I'd rather swing for the fences and make something that is maybe a little bit less professional than the white thing, yeah. but at least it's original. At least it's a new idea that someone may remember and go, yeah. what was that video with the blah, blah, blah? Like, I've never gone back and be like, I got to watch that sick wall again. Yeah. Like, thank God they went in that white room. Like, it looks clean. It looks good. I, yeah. I, I, there is nothing wrong with that, but it's not memorable. It's not making yes. a moment. There is nothing that we are adding to the value. And I think that's equivalent yet yeah, to, to the Hellfire cover. It, yeah, like, it, it genuinely it, is. It's great. Like, it is a brilliant thing. It's impressive if you can do it and pull it off great. But, like, mm -hmm. take a chance. Take a step. Take, yep. There you go. Take Every time. Just step the other way for a minute. Yeah. And just because, I mean, I'll tell you, I mean, just today, I was literally scrolling. We're, uh, Bearing Point's talking about our next music video. And I'm talking about, because the new song's super heavy. We're talking about different uh, B-roll mm -hmm. ideas and things. And I'm like, yeah. I'm like, man, I just, I want to do this and that. And I'm sending them like varials videos and ideas for things that we can do. And the first thing Josh said was not a white wall. Mm -hmm. That's the only thing he said in the chat. And I was like, thank God this man gets it. I was mm -hmm. I literally, after that, I went on Instagram. I scrolled twice. <laughs> there was a white wall video. I'm yep. like, oh, there it is. Yes. Everybody's doing it. I'm yes. like, I, we can't escape it. And it's mm -hmm. fine. It, like you said, it looks great. It's, yes. It is super sick with the black and the, it's great. It's dope. Yes. But yeah. do I want to be a part of the hundred and something bands that may have just done that yeah you know or do i want to like be in a small room or maybe maybe in a shed put me in a shed i don't care what's happening put me in a shed i'll hold a i'll hold like a a backhoe or something to be like doing vocals with it's something different something, and it's yes. it's gonna pull eyes yes uh it, i think is more capable of, and it might also not pull it right again like the white wall is so classic because it is so clean and so mm -hmm. eye-catching and like i get it and it's hard to produce that in a shed yeah but if you can it is a way more compelling piece with a setting yeah. and a character and a, and a vibe. Whereas yeah. these, yeah, these white spaces. And it's, I think, I think we've all seen Evan Almighty. I think like generationally we all grew up with these movies that oh, happen yeah. in heaven. And that is something that we all want to recreate as our, our euphoria. And it's like, no, find some other, find some other paradise. Like, yeah, yeah find something else that elicits that feeling that you're chasing. Uh, yeah. And it's happened everywhere. You think back, I, I, right now, the first thing I can think about white wall is 
Knives and Pens, Black Veil Brides. That's so long ago. Oh, God, it's so long ago, and I hate that. Damn, but, dude. That was one yeah. of, like, three music videos on my iPod, and I watched that music video on my iPod Touch back yeah. in the day, and I watched yeah. that music video a gajillion times. See? Yeah. But, those eight, but those A shots, <laughs> the live shots, yeah. white wall, white room, yes. that was it. That's yep. the one. And, and the B th- shots are just black. It's the same invert. Yeah, that, yeah, yeah they were walking common. around. Yeah, yes. it's, yeah it's tough. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, I don't know. Uh I'm sure I'm, yeah, trying to humanize myself. And it's like, I'm sure I've filmed in warehouses that it's like, yeah, we've seen, like, Mm -hmm. I'm sure that I am not above this entirely, but that's my (laughs) two cents on it. And I was really careful because, yeah, I'm sure someone could pull up one of my videos and be like, that looks pretty white to me. (laughs) And it's like, well, just know it was out of my hands. Like, whatever. Uh, Yeah, I'm talking myself into trouble at this point because I don't know. Yeah, nothing comes to mind, but I'm sure that there's one in the catalog of like, what happened here, buddy? Yeah, yeah, you could probably (laughs) go back and find it, but that's the thing, you know what I mean? Because that's that's more fire to the flame of what you're saying. I mean, I've done it. It's there, you know? So, yeah, yeah, I get it. Yeah, it's always a challenge to try and keep things fresh, but it sounds like you've got that working. We're working on new music, cooking stuff up. Uh, oh, yeah. Are you in the studio? Are you guys doing it yourself? And, of course, I don't know how much of this is public to talk about, so please feel free to, yeah, uh, big that, things yeah. coming soon. Yeah, I don't, I don't ever mind, <laughs> like, publicly talking about stuff just because, like, I want to be in the public eye. Mm-hmm. This is why I do this. I'm not – I mean, I love music, but I also, like, I want that – placement in the world mm-hmm. so like i want you to know what's going on i'm gonna tell you everything <laughs> maybe not everything cool. but i'll give them sure. everything so sure we are working and recording on music we have two and a half songs that were written for me and with me um and we're in a weird place between diy and you know outside sourcing only because i've worked with so many producers at this point i've built the connections with so many producers that i would like to give them my business and I would like to, you know, I've also learned in the scene that there are a lot of benefits that come with working with outside people, mm-hmm. uh, but they are very used to doing in-house mixing. Sure. So Kanan, the the lead, he's our lead guitarist guy. Um, he, he, has, he has a studio. Mm-hmm. I think it's called Greenpoint Studio. I don't remember what it's actually, or Black, Black Bear, Black Point, something. It, it's a studio. He has a studio in Bristol. And he does mixing for a lot of bands. I think recently he's done Slugs um, and another black metal band that he recently did. And he does good work. And there's there's nothing saying that, like, you know, just because someone in your project does it that you have to go to them. And just saying you don't want to go to them doesn't mean anything either. I would just like to be able to, uh, I guess, yeah, hire, I, want, I want to get that experience. I mean, I want my name to be upon the roster with others. One of our friends has done mixes with – or. I'm not gonna say our friends, but because they don't know him yet. Sure. But one, of, yeah, one of my guys has worked with like Falling in Reverse. Um, they're just you know very large yeah, quality bands, yeah. and they have the list. And I'm like, I have a quote. He's very quick. Turnovers a day and a half, and now so I've shot them all the names. We're talking about it. We're open about it. We're just gonna kind of work around what you know. We're gonna figure it out. So we're in the we're in a weird weird yeah weird world of like between the two. Mm-hmm. Kane and can do it. We're gonna do it. We're going to see. And then we're also going to try something else and just get a vibe. I think that's always a real challenge. Like bands start DIY and there there is a point where it's worth taking on outside help. And uh, some friends of mine are going through a similar thing. And they, yeah, just for the first time, similar thing. Yeah, we're doing everything in-house yeah. and finally reached out. Uh, and they were ecstatic about it. And I was really curious to see how it was going to go for them because I think they take a lot of pride in doing things themselves. And mm-hmm. I was curious of like, if they get back a better product, is it just a worse product because it's not their product? Yeah. Uh, but it seems like, yeah, they really enjoyed that process and it really went well. And I'm always curious of, yeah, as a, as a DIY band, it's always tough to figure out when that moment is of like, I need to pass off the reins. And I think yeah. we all want to hold on to the reins. And again, it goes back to this like sexy artist nature of like, no, we're going to do everything ourselves. We don't need help. It's just going to be good art and people are going to see it and they're going to love it and it's going to be perfect. And it's like, yeah. maybe. <laughs> yeah, yeah, maybe. It's a, I, I try to tell this to a lot of people. You can do it yourself up to a certain point, mm-hmm. like just like management. You can do it yourself up to a certain point until you actually need like help. Yeah. And yeah. I think when you start working on multiple songs and you're also playing shows and you're also making content and you're mm-hmm. also selling merch and you're doing things like interviews and podcasts and you're you're busy, that's when you need to pass it off. Yep. Cuz now you can't yeah. focus on it or when you're at a high caliber, you have you know, you're working on an album, 12 songs. Mixing one song takes a long time. Yeah. Do you really want to spend the next, like, two weeks hyper fixating on this one sound? Mm-hmm. And not for nothing, this is a sound that you built. You don't have a third party That's looking exactly at it. That's exactly where I was going. Yep. Yeah, you need that third party, someone else that hasn't heard it, someone that hasn't 
you know, they, they can give you things that you didn't think about. And now it's fresh to them, especially people that like it's their job. They just sit there all day long and they, oh, we're going to turn the EQ up. We're going to mm-hmm. do this. They yep. know what to do. They get it out so quick and you get the time. So, OK, we recorded it. We're done recording. Next one. And then here you go, buddy. Mix it up. That's I th- it. I think the long term angle of that is and I'm sure it's a little bit different. But for me with the music video, like when I get the song, love or hate the song is my favorite song for that month. And I like I have to make it that because mm-hmm. I have to love it. And yep. that is easier now than it has been at times in the past. Uh, and it gets easier over time as I get to pick my clientele a little bit more. But like, yeah, up or down, I, it has to be my favorite song. And even if it's top 10, it has to be number one. Yes. And like that's how my brain has to work for me to love this thing enough to see it through and give it all the love and attention it deserves. Mm-hmm. Uh where I think that that runs into trouble uh, is when you are mixing, when yeah. you wrote the song yourself. And it's like, by the time I'm done with that song, like I'm kind of tired of it. Like yeah. I've, I've kind of burnt myself out on how many times I can listen to this thing and still love it. Mm-hmm. And the idea of writing it, then mixing and going through the process that I go through of, yeah, music video editing and mixing are similar ish. And just the minutia of it, of like, it's two seconds at a time and make sure all the details are right. And then finally yep. you play the full thing and go back. And it's just, you're working on the song in a way that no one else ever will. And the minutia yes. of it. And then to go through all that and then go, okay, now I'm going to play this on stage and be excited about it. Mm-hmm. It's like, nah, dude, like by the time I'm done with the music video, I'm not getting on stage and being excited about the song. I'm getting yep. on stage and being tired of this song. Yeah. And that's not, yeah, it seems risky to me. Or it yeah, seems like there's you a You start to hate it. Yes. And I'm sure that's different for some people. Some people, you know, I'm pretty sure people that mix their own stuff probably mm-hmm. do it all day. They love it. That's why they do it. Yeah. So they probably don't hate it as soon as mm-hmm. I would. Yeah. But like when I write a song and like, I, I get it all tightened or whatever. I demo it. Mm-hmm. I get it as good as possible. And then I send it off. Do you guys like this? Okay, we'll fix up whatever we got to fix. And I'm done with it. That's mm-hmm. it. I, I'm done. Because I'm going to sit there and drive every day to work. Yep. I'm going to listen to it three times. <laughs> I'm going to be on break. I'm going to listen to it once. Mm-hmm. I'm going to make sure I show all my friends. So I'm going to listen to it a bunch of times more. Mm-hmm. Probably within a week, I'm going to be like, nah, I'm going to listen to something else now. And even if it's a masterpiece, it 100%. is disliked on yep. some <laughs> core level that is not conscious, not controllable, yeah. that you can't fix. It's like, uh, yeah, that's a, a, a fatigue that I haven't learned to overcome. Yeah. Like once you get that taste in your mouth, it's like, fuck, I got to finish this quick. Yeah, <laughs> There's yeah. no coming back from this. For me though, at least I'll like, uh, when, when I do that, I'll go through that process. Yeah. But usually by that time that I start to hate it is usually when my producer or a producer will mm-hmm. Get it back to me. Yeah. And then at that point, now I'm hearing it for a brand new all over again. Yes. Yeah. Because I heard it one way. I get it back and I'm like, whoa. I'm like, that's insane. I'm like, yep. this, I didn't think we could sound like that. And it and they did that for us. Yeah. So I'm like, now I love it again. And then the master. And then I do the video. And now I'm getting a visual. So it's not just the auditory mm-hmm. that I like or the the audio. Or now I'm getting a visual and all this. It's it it flourishes. Mm-hmm. And then at that point, you know, then I'm like, I'm excited about it. I yeah. think that's a, a beautiful thing. I wish I could do that. I, uh, bands always talk about the moment of getting the mixes back and it sounds so like Christmas morning and it's like, I should send my videos out to get color graded or something like, yeah, I, what is my equivalent of that? Like, how do I get yeah. that Christmas day feeling of like, I made this baby and it came back to me better than I could have dreamed it could be. Yeah. Uh, and I don't quite know how I emulate that. And again, it goes back to the same idea of like bringing other people in and when to ask for help and all that other bullshit yeah. that I'm yeah, not not ready to take on. Yet. Yeah, see, yeah. Um, I mean, I could imagine that probably be the idea though. You could probably like, like t- you film, you you edit, you cut everything up, you get it all together nice and tight, and you're like, get it going. And then you probably get it back and you're like, those colors, you're like, whoa. I'm, I didn't that overlay, you're like, dude, that was mm-hmm. you know what I mean? And now you're like, that's sick. A hundred percent as you get better at this, you specialize more. And yeah. that's where that becomes I don't I think I like doing everything in house. And again, this is an ownership thing. This is my yeah. own ego. This is like a yeah, me having a fat and stubborn head. It's like I just I want to do it all myself. And yeah. that isn't sustainable. And I'm realizing that currently of like uh, if I could get help with this part, if I could delegate this task, I could get more done. Like everyone, you would get more from me. I would get more done. I could help someone else get their feet in the door. Like it's a it's a win win. Yeah. And I just haven't figured out how to make that a reality that I am uh that feels like productive and that I'm comfortable and happy and like, oh, that's the right move. Also. Yes. Yeah. I uh, seen that same kind of growth with uh with Eric from Square Up. Yes. So we yeah. he shot uh my first band's video and he had done I think three or four videos at that time. Mm-hmm. Um and he was very like this is like new. He was a producer. I first hit him up two thousand and 15. I hit him up because yeah. we needed a song mixed. Mm-hmm. And he's a producer. So we were like, all right Eric, let's do it. And He's like, you know, I actually do videos now too. He was like, you know, I just did this. So he shows us this music video. It was like a, like a skate park. He's like, this guy's rapping. And I'm like, that's sick. And I'm like, I guess let's do it. Uh, you know, you know, I, I didn't yeah. know anything better. So like, let's yeah. go for it. 
he did the video. He was by himself. We did like four, we did three different videos because the first one, all the files got corrupted. The second one, I think the shoot just was not good. <laughs> and then like okay. the third one, we were like, that's it. Yeah. So I, we did it. Great video. Video came out great, but he did it all on his own. He was working hard. He had like one of his buddies come and help him lift stuff and move stuff. And that was fine. Um, but now I look at him and I'm like, this is an entire, like you built an, yeah. an empire of things. You have, yep. you have behind the scenes work. You have people that help with special effects. You have actors, you do all this. I'm like, you, that's, that's, I guess he knew the, I get for him that that was his point. He was like, this is when I have to make the change. And that's when he started make, and it works. Some people just know. Yeah. And it's yeah. crazy. Cause it really does like change the atmosphere. He's a great, yeah. Great model to follow. You mentioned the very old videos earlier. And I think yeah. Eric Easterday is another one who, yeah, did most yeah. of those videos. Who's just, yeah. A brilliant guy. Uh, when you said Eric, that's what I, I yeah. thought <laughs> we were mentioning. Yeah. yeah. Both of them are incredible talents. And oh my gosh. Yeah. Yeah. I would aspire to, to emulate their businesses here. Um, Hell yes. We get toward, as we get towards our hour here, um, I can't let you go without getting back to the seventh grade. Oh, gosh. Yeah. 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 <laughs> Cutting oh, edge. Man. Super urgent. We talked about all the great band stuff that's up and coming. Yeah. Take me to the glory days. Yes. In seventh grade, are we doing bedroom covers? What is our yeah, entry to Dude. vocals in this? Yeah. So, um, oh, man. Hell yes. Um, <laughs> I like it. <laughs> uh, yeah. So, all of my friends were in the metal. I was in the metal. I, was, I, I started out playing guitar. I really just wanted to be a guitarist. Guitars are expensive, yes. and my family did. We were very not great, and like I would have to like take an acoustic guitar and try to like learn metal riffs playing. Like yeah, that. yeah, whatever. didn't work yeah, out well. Yeah. So uh, I don't know. I forget oh, what was the moment. It was oh, I, yeah, it was Drowning Pool. It was Bodies by Drowning Pool, and I remember sitting at our family computer, and we were. I was like watching the video. And I was like, how does he do that? I was like, I don't get it. I just could not understand for the life of me how he did that. Like just that, like, yeah. I, I couldn't. I would like practice it while I was walking home and stuff. And I, you know, I lived in the city. So I'm like walking, <laughs> screaming, like, yeah. you know, and so people probably thought I was crazy. And I couldn't, I could never figure out the, the situation. So I was like looking up on YouTube, how to metal scream, mm -hmm. how to, you know, weird, weird wording Whatever for it. Could, I never yeah, get yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. Um, and eventually I came up on an NTN Sin video that, uh, you know, you know who NTN Sin is. Um, Some of my friends toured with him back in the yeah. day and it's a Hall of Fame Yeah, level see, story. exactly. So I found a bunch of his videos and he had a scream school. I will say, I watched them recently and it was not great. But <laughs> you don't say. Yeah. That guy hasn't held up well. Next you're going to say Brian Stars is creepy. Oh, man. Dude, it was so much. Oh, God. It was. I'm like watching. I'm like, this guy's wrong. I'm like, <laughs> but it got me in the door. So yep. I was watching his videos religiously and I didn't pay for his course. Sure. Because I had no money. But like I would like watch the free videos and that was all I needed. At that point, he like said something about moving your Adam's apple to change pitch. And I don't know. Hello. He's talking. <laughs> He's taking the vocal courses. Yeah. Too. <laughs> so, um, yeah, I just watched a bunch of that stuff and I got into it. And I just, I, the first thing I learned was a nice mid. I learned how to do a good mid and I, I took it from there. I went crazy, but it wasn't great. It was really bad. Sure. It was, you know, but I got the, I got the idea. Um, so now I'm in school and I'm telling everybody. You must be in like a small apartment doing this. Is your family like, yep. yo, what the fuck is this dude doing? Like, yep. yeah, if you're well, in a city tight on money, I assume. Yeah. It's a yeah. small apartment without too much space. Mm -hmm. Well, my mom, <laughs> my, uh, my mom's from like the New York hardcore scene. So oh, like, okay. she's pretty okay, like accustomed okay, okay. to it. So yeah, she yeah, got yeah. me really into it. From okay. the jump. Um, Interesting. That's cool. Yeah. So I was, you know, it wasn't like super crazy, but she's a, she was working at a hospital. She's working like overnight. Uh, okay. So okay. for like six o'clock and I'm just like screaming, I'm sure she's like, what the <laughs> fuck? And I'm like, yeah, yeah, I sound sick. <laughs> like, Coming home from a 12 hour shift at a hospital. Yeah. And your son is yelling because he thinks he's going to make music. Yep. It's like, yeah. Yo, Wild. What a state. Bless exactly. <laughs> but she was mad supportive about it. So it was cool. Bless so her. yeah. So I did it. I kept going and like, at that point, I'm in, I'm like in school showing everybody I can scream. <laughs> One of my other friends was like, you're not good. And I was like, excuse me. I was like, you can't do any better than me. And he was like, yeah, I can. He was like, let's do a fucking vocal off. And I was like, okay. <laughs> so I went to his house and we did like a, we did, <laughs> it, was, it was an Escape the Fate song. <laughs> and we were just going back and forth. Like I did one line, he did one line. And like, I was so hurt because we put it on Facebook. <laughs> And like all of our friends were like, he did it better. And I was like, no. 
I was so hurt. So I had dedicated like three years just specifically to vocals. I like studied like every vocalist I liked at the time. And I mean, like this was like a hard, this was like Vegeta type of practice. I was locked the fuck in. So I had like, I walked everywhere and everywhere I went, I would have my skull candies in. Oh, the all, skull yeah, candies. Man, oh, all yeah. All the way up oh, yeah. to the max. And I'm just like, I. it was always the, the Chelsea Grin EP, the mm -hmm. first EP, because that was just like one of my favorite bands. Everywhere I went, I was like, we have to get this down. We have to figure it out. I have to be better than him. And it was him specifically. And I'm a year after we did that, he didn't even like metal. <laughs> he was like in a completely different personality. And I was like, I can't ever live this down. <laughs> so I was just going hard about this. Um, at that point, I started getting kind of good. And I was like, I'm going to post a cover on Facebook. Um, at the same time, I had just like found myself. So I just came out. I'm bisexual. Um, and I just came out. So I was like, hella gay. I was like, <laughs> where's, I mean, I had like a pride necklace. I'm wearing purple pants, everything. I'm like, Sick. hella gay. I'm like, let's go, dude. I was like, I like men. And I, it was super funny. I love it. It was great. Um, so I went and I did, <laughs> I did a cover of uh, No Pity for a Coward okay. by uh, System, or oh, System, so down. System, sorry, like by Suicide Silence. And in the, yeah, it's still on my Facebook. I'm up there just going in. I mean, I'm doing the thing. Hell yeah. And that was the moment when my my friend was like, you're a good vocalist. I was like, am I? He was like, you're really good. He was like, you, we need to like do something. Mind you, really good for like ninth, 10th grade. Yeah, 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 yeah. I'm like, we should do something then. And he's like, let's do it. And so we we got together uh, and we started Sabretooth. And that was the first band that I was ever in. At that point, that's we had like a year of bad shows because yep. it was all bad. We were doing only covers. It was me and another vocalist. I think every band should start with covers. But that's, oh, yeah. that's a different conversation. Yeah. But yeah, when I, uh, I do a lot of college shows. So students get up and like, yeah, student openers before the national headline. Yeah. And it's like, if you're a fucking student opener, just play covers. Like don't no play one of your songs. Maybe. Yeah. Two. But if you have six, and I think this is true of opening the Webster of like, Unless you have six songs that people know. But if mm -hmm. this is, yeah, first year shows, that first year Sabretooth shows, like play a day to remember covers. Yes. Like, figure out how to be on stage and then worry about your music. But exactly. Like, yeah, there is no point. In Especially being young too. I yeah. mean, you you want to you wanna just feel it out. You got to get the vibe. Yeah. Yeah. So it was great. You know, we did it. But uh, in that time, I really learned how to do vocals holding a microphone, mm -hmm. how to do vocals in a, in a way that I wouldn't hurt myself. Because then at that point, we got better. I got better. The band started growing. I went to a studio so I could actually hear myself actually sound like a vocalist. Mm -hmm. And at that point, I was like, this is it. I, the, all those years locked in, everything that I did, I was like, this is how we're going to get it. And yeah, I obviously, thankfully, I, I grew and I made a great, uh, I made a great base for myself in music just by doing that and doing the covers on mm -hmm. my pages while I was growing. And even now, I'm not going to stop doing them just because that's how I, like, showcased, like, my growth as a vocalist. I wanted people to see, like, I used to sound like this. Now I sound like this. I used to do that. Now I do this. And people people seem to like it. I like that. Uh, I'm glad I asked them. <laughs> yeah, that was such a great epic of a story from yeah. seventh grade to saber too. So I appreciate that. Uh, and, yes, I think that uh, I like leaving the past stuff up. But, like, I'm not proud of it, but I think it's important that you see that part of me, too. Yes. And I... Uh, I understand why people tend to clean out the first couple of years of their stuff. And I, I understand that fully and I empathize with it. But I think for me, it's like, I try everything in my power to keep those out there. Yeah. Like, yes. Uh, for any success you think I may be having now, please just know that that's where it started. And so when you start, like, don't be deceived by what you think my first video is. Cause exactly. I want you to see my first video and know it's very accessible. Yeah. 100%. <laughs> you can make my first music video, right? Whoever's listening, take your phone and you can make my first music <laughs> video. I'm almost positive that you can do better right now from wherever you are, like figure it out. Uh, yeah. But yes, Wes, my man, we did it. We got to our hour. Oh, yeah. year, episode 67. Uh, before we get out of here, I'd like to remind, uh, have you remind people of the bearing point shows coming up. Uh, oh, so yeah. There's one, yeah, one we talked about earlier, and if there's anything else you want to plug, please feel free. Oh, but 100%. Yes. June 15th, Edict at Bleachers in Bristol. Um, throwing the shout-outs because that's what I do. Bless them. Edict. Uh, let's go 
uh, Euclid, let's go shape thrower. Oh, I'm on the roll now. Uh, Chain Twist, uh, Enox, Kayanashi. Uh, yeah, everyone else. That's it. You got <laughs> homies. That's all I can think of. I love you guys. Shout out Mortal Reminder. <laughs> oh, yeah. Just that album. That album bangs hard as hell. Uh, episode 67 from everyone. We did it. Wes Robinson. Uh, Wes, where can people find you on social media? Where do they tell you that you were awesome today? Oh, yeah. Feral.io on Instagram. Wesley Tooth NY on Facebook. Um, TikTok, Deathcore Daddy. Uh, I think that's all I have because I'm a loser. That's Yeah, I think that's it. Let's go. Bless up. Follow us. Have a beautiful day. Uh, if you made it this far, please do leave a like or comment on the video. It does help, and I hate asking for them, but unfortunately, it does help. So thank you. Have a beautiful day. Have a great life, and we'll talk soon.